Now let's look at how to apply this to find the electric flux density outside our cylinder of charge. We need to choose a Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface is going to be right out here on the outside as we said. That means that we can find the electric flux any place on the outside of this surface and it will be symmetric because it's centered around our charge distribution. So we're going to apply that the closed surface integral of d dot ds is equal, to the, is equal to the total charge enclosed, like this. Our closed surface is going to include a top and a bottom, but let's see what happens there. On the top, my electric flux is coming out, and on the bottom, an equal amount of electric flux is coming out in the opposite direction. The top and the bottom, because of symmetry, are always going to cancel out. So the only part I need to include in my closed surface is this outer, outer can-shaped piece. So this surface just becomes the surface of that can. Well, my d, in general, is dr in the r direction, plus d phi in the phi direction, plus, d, plus dz in the z direction. And I'm going to dot that with my surface. What surface do I have on the outside of the can? I can either poke it and observe that it is in the r direction, or I can look to see what is changing. So the things that are changing are d phi and dz r is constant on this surface. So I'm going to choose from table 3.1 the r directed surface which has d phi and dz changing. The r here is part of the, the surface that you'll just see there in table 3.1. So now let's dot these and what I'm going to get is an integral of dr, r, sorry, erase that. When r and r are dotted they are 1. So I get r dr d phi dz, like this. And when it's dotted with phi or z, I get zero. So there's my integral. Phi in this case is going to go from zero to two pi, and z is going to go from minus infinity to infinity. So I'm going to get, this can come outside because it's constant on my surface, this can come outside because it's outside the variables of integration, so I get r dr phi from 0 to 2 pi, z from minus infinity to infinity. Now let's see what this is equal to. Because I have a volume charge distribution, this is going to be in the integral, the volume integral of that charge distribution. So let's write that. This is going to be a triple integral of my volume distribution, which is 7r coulombs per meter cubed, and the dr term from table 3.1 is r d phi, dr d phi dz. Now how, f how big does r go in this place? On the left hand side, r was actually out here where I wanted to find my electric field, so it stays as r. But right here I'm integrating, on the right hand side, I'm integrating to find the charge, and the charge ends at a. So r goes from 0 to a on the right hand side, even though it was r on the left hand side. My phi still goes from 0 to 2 pi, and my z goes from minus infinity to infinity. So when I integrate this, I'm going to get 7r cubed over 3, with r going from 0 to a. I'm going to get phi from 0 to 2 pi, and I'm going to get z from minus infinity to infinity. I can see that this cancels out on both sides, as does my 2 pi. And what I'm going to get is r dr is equal to 7 a cubed over 3. dr then is going to be 7 a cubed over 3 r. This gives me my electric flux density any place on the outside of this cylinder. Again, look what I did. I made a Gaussian surface that allowed my electric flux density to be constant on that surface. That's my Gaussian surface and that shows that my system is symmetric. I then integrate the left hand side, which is this part right here. We're going to call that the left hand side. And then, after I was finished with that, I integrated the right hand side to find the total charge that was enclosed by the Gaussian volume that I made, the Gaussian surface. Then I simply did my integrations and set them equal so that I could find dr.